Welcome everybody. We're going to start with the uh, citizen form. Rules of conduct is on the bulletin board. Everybody read it and it will be in effect tonight. We got one person signed up and that's Mary Jane Skinner. Mary, please get up and we all know where you live and your name, but state it for the record, please. My name is Mary Jane Skinner. I reside at 792 Stones River Road here in Laverne. Tonight I'm here to complain, gripe, or whatever you want to call it. The working site that Amnon's going to be building those homes there on Stones River Road and Hollandale Road uh, has great concern for me. First off, there's no potty out there for those men working. And it has been, I guess, my, well, whatever. I was, saw the guy a couple of times, hide behind the big tractor tray or back tray, uh, train or whatever you want to call it, to use the bathroom. Sure, he was hid from the road, but he wasn't hid from me. And that tore me all to pieces. So I feel like there should be a potty out there and a dumpster. <coughs> uh, some of those holes, or I call them trenches, that they've dug has had cardboards, plastic bottles, tires put in them, and there's still stuff like that out there that they're putting in those holes. So if there's anything that can be done, I'd sure like to have it done. And uh, the holes, the sink holes that was out there, and the small caves that was out there, they have filled them in. And that's not a right, right thing to do, I don't feel like, because of the ecology. And uh, then right now, my, one of my concerns is there's a whole bunch of shingles out there. What are they going to do with those shingles when they start building? Are they going to put them in the holes, or are they going to dig them up and take them off? Um, and also, I have another question. Is there any way we can get a plan on where they're building or how they build in those houses and how many houses they're going to build out there. <coughs> and there's water standing in the ditch there on Hollandale Road where they'd have trouble before with one of the water lines out there. And, uh, yeah, and there's mosquitoes, I know, because I walk out there every, just about every afternoon. And that detention pond, instead of the water going down, it keeps coming up. Did they hit a stream when they were digging in that ground? And I mean, they're still digging. So I'd, I'd like to find out what can be done, if there's anything that can be done. First off, get a potty out there. Because the last few days, there's more than one guy. And I'm out there mowing, picking up stuff in the yard and stuff like that. And I don't appreciate it. And I know what they're doing because I've seen them turn around and zipping their breeches. And I just, just don't care for that at all. But uh, I, I'd like to have a building plan if I, who do I see about getting a building plan? But all that water standing is not good because there is mosquitoes out there. Thank you. Thank you. And no one else is on the uh, sheet for citizen form and seeing it's after 5.30, we're just gonna roll right into, uh, do I need to call the citizen form over? No, it's part of the workshop. Okay. We're just going to roll right into the, the workshop. This is the Board of Mayor and Alderman, September 28, 2017 uh, uh, meeting workshop. It's a workshop for October um, 3rd, 2017 regular meeting. Uh, the uh, prayer will be with uh, Alderman Cole. The Pledge of Allegiance will be Alderman Jones. Um, you need to look over your minutes for September the 5th, 2017 regular meeting. I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, due to the, the events that's happening, uh, I want to, I want to go ahead and do a, we don't usually do a prayer for a workshop, but for the events that's happened uh, locally, I, I like for everybody standing. I like to do the prayer. Don't mind. Dear God, we come before this day and ask for your guide, wisdom, and praise for your glory. Our prayers, thoughts, and heavy hearts go out to the people that were affected by the violence in the 
Burnett Chapel Church. Our hearts weigh heavy for the suffering and losses. The power of God praise gives us strength for healing. A place of peace and worship should never be a scene for violence. Put our hearts and soul in the Lord. God is great. We ask of all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, number two will be report, department reports. Then number three, we've got two presentations. That's for meeting only. A will be for employment opportunities for um, United Parcel Service. B is proclamation for Robert Cable, uh, Cable uh, Ingalls. Uh, that puts us down to number four for old business. Second reading ordinance 2017-21, an ordinance to amend the city of Laverne zoning ordinance to change the official zoning map for tax map 14, parcel 50, 50.03 and 47.02 by approving a special exemption to allow manufacturing of scrap operations in a I-3 special use industrial zoning district consisting of approximately 16 acres located between 444 and 480 Dick Buchanan Street received a favorable recommendation from the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Planning Commission on August 29, 2017 and uh, Tuesday night we will have a public hearing to be held on this item. Uh, any any questions on this ordinance? Any discussion on any item on this ordinance? Hearing none, we'll <coughs> give me a run number five. This is also a second reading ordinance 2017-22. An ordinance to amend the city Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map of tax map 29 partial 20.0. 04 consisting of 36.69 acres located at 330 Blair Road adjacent to the Smyrna City, Smyrna, the Smyrna Town limits. Uh, this is from a R1 low density residential and a I1 light industrial zoning district to a PDR planned density residential zoning district. This received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on August the 29th, 2017, and this will also have a public hearing Tuesday tonight. Any questions or concerns sir, concerning this ordinance? Hearing none, we're down to consent agenda. Uh, number six is consent agenda. Approved city bids and purchases. Number one, state contract purchase, bulk road salt. This is something we do every year Garland, uh, uh, <clears throat> I guess I guess w we're going to have to purchase some. Uh, we've got some. Uh, always put some on reserve, so I've got some on reserve. If we do need it, if not, we have to pay what happens. Okay. That's that amounts what we you to get every year, right? Yes. Okay. Any any further questions on on the salt? We'll move down to B. Approve use agreement with the youth incorporated for the 2017 fall in hog hockey league. I think it's something also we do every year. This is with the uh, youth incorporated. The hockey is up at the back of the park next to uh, Sand Hill Road. Number C, approve use agreement with Rufford County Crimson Tie Youth Football for the 2017 Fall Football League. Uh, this is something that's, that's kind of new, uh, but we, we do this every year with, with some kind of group. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering why it was, it was Crimson Tie. <laughs> It ain't because you're Alabama, is it? Oh, no, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't mind it, but I'm just saying I didn't have nothing to do with it. 
I kind of think I smell a rat somewhere. <laughs> Number D, approved final change order, Hurricane Creek Greenway Phase 2. <clears throat> this is uh, the, uh, let's see, somewhere here. Wires is the engineer, but if Wires is not here, I think Kyle can speak on it if needs to. John Gordon is yes, here John, from Wires. John, come on up here. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Alderman. Um, this project actually is one of my first projects when I started at Wiser uh, a long time ago, so it's good to see it finally getting done. <coughs> um, Kyle had asked me to come and uh, explain a little bit about the project and about what we're doing with the final change order. Uh, the funding for this project, the part that's not the city funding, is coming through TDOT, and so that makes the project have to follow the TDOT specifications and TDOT procedures, and that means that the contract for construction is a unit price contract, meaning that the contractor will be paid for each item that he constructs based on how much he uses. So, for example, base stone under, under the trail and then the asphalt for the trail they'll measure how much of each of those items are used and so at the end of the project uh, there's a final change order that adjusts all of the items to what was actually used and so that there can be agreement between the contractor and the city of the amounts that were used and that's the terminology of final change order um, so i put together a powerpoint to look at this you can go ahead um, and the first few slides are just a, about the project, so we can go through those quickly. We can go ahead and go uh, to the next one. We have uh, the trail is 1.58 miles, so it goes all the way from the library uh, entrance all the way to the traffic circle at Stones River Road. Uh, we've got three bridges, and we have the underpass under the road and two wood boardwalks to cross wetland areas. Uh, the boardwalks were a requirement from... Uh, environmental permit procedures. Um, we also go over some property that is City of Laverne property and some property that is Corps of Engineers property and we received permission from Corps of Engineers to use that property. Uh, you can go to the next one. Um, so there's two parts to the final change order. One is to adjust the number of days that the contractor is allowed to the number of days that was actually used. So this project started with 270 calendar days and was supposed to be over by May 4th based on information that the contractor provided that he would be justified in having an extra 31 days. That brings it to June 4th. And then based on when they actually completed paving the trail was back on August 30th. So I think I've got the, the days in there. It's 87 days over their time that was originally planned in the contract. Um, here's some photos of what the trail has completed with the bridge that leads out of the ball field park and goes down under the underpass. And then these are some photos of the asphalt part of the trail, showing what that looks like. Uh, then we've got boardwalk over the wetland areas and then at the far end, uh, if you can hold this slide, this is one of the ones that I wanted to show you, uh, one of the reasons for the cost overruns on the project is the uh, soil and the wet soils that were under there. Uh, the photo on the left is when they started excavating and you can see that the surface soil is dry. But then they dig down a little and it's wet underneath there. And then the middle slide is the next day when they came back to place their stone. Uh, it's already filled in with water there. Uh, the creek is just to the right of those photos behind the tree line. And then the far right photo is base stone being added, uh, graded solid rock, large riprap rock that's placed in there to support the trail. Um, that's part of how TDOT uh, requires the construction to go to undercut and backfill. And that happened a lot more on the trail than what we originally estimated. Uh, we've done several greenway trails along the creek and so we knew that there would be some places of undercut and backfill and we accounted for some just not as much as actually was out there um, okay so you can go ahead on that. 
Um, here's another example next to one of the creek crossings where we're using a bridge to cross the creek. Also mainly again for environmental reasons to just stay completely out of the creek. And the pond area that you can see there is where the uh, abutment or the concrete support for the bridge is gonna go. And so that dug out one day, the next day they came back, it's full of water. And so that's an example of how um, the soil conditions were hard to deal with while they were down there at the trail. Uh, this is a, one of the reasons that we uh, have recommended granting days for the contractor was flooding of the creek, which washed away uh, some of the gravel and, and some of the underlay geotech material. Um, so that the, the way that we've set it up is they'll be allowed extra days for that time to fix the problem but not be paid for any extra material to fix that. Uh, and then there's a couple other photos there on the right uh, showing some rutting that was caused by the contractor's trucks. Again, that we've subtracted the repair costs out of the project so that the city's not paying twice for the same, uh, same operations. Uh, and then here's a summary of the, the total amounts and how those uh, overruns add up mainly the main overruns on the project are the undercut and the backfill with rock. Um, and then there's the summary. There are liquidated damages, which is not, it's not a penalty for being late, but it's written into the contract that there are charges for the contractor for being late. And if anyone has any questions, I can what you say in there. Uh, you think it needs to be like something like a French drain, or y'all just going to dig down so many feet and fill it with with rock and 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 reinf reinforce the bottom? Right. The reinforce the bottom is what happened. Uh, the wetland wetland is an official environmental definition that TDEC uses. So in the wetland areas, we cross those with the boardwalk because we're not allowed to go in the wetland. But the uh, there was a lot of areas outside the limits of technically delineated wetland that also had poor soils. And in those areas, we dug down and used rock to bring up uh, to provide the structural support. Um, and that's how we did that. Uh, Mayor, there's a couple things I want to add to this. Uh, we will remove this from the consent agenda uh, because what you actually have in your packet is not uh, one hundred percent accurate at the moment. Uh, John still got to get with uh, Sessions Paving to finalize some of the quantities, uh, but for the most part, it's it's very close <coughs> to what you're going to see. Uh, we should have the final um, values and units to where everything's agreed upon Tuesday night that are for you to vote on. But we want to pull it off the consent agenda for that purpose, and I want to <coughs> uh, reiterate the fact on on the liquidated damages because we been asked several times, you know, when's this going to be complete? When's this going to be complete? Like John stated, they're uh, 87 <coughs> days over <coughs> what they were supposed to be done. So they will be charged $87,000 for that. So that will be taken pretty much off the contract cost at the end. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Now we're down to number E, approve easement for the pipeline right away from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. <coughs> uh, this is the easement down Stone River Road. I think, Bruce, you could probably speak on this. <coughs> yes, sir. We, we received this a week or two ago. Uh, it is for an existing easement that we have along Stone River Road. It, if you look at the maps, which... Uh, starts on page 103 of the packet. Uh, you can see that it starts just below the roundabout and goes up Stone River Road. Uh, the following page basically goes up to the entrance to the boat ramp. Uh, so it is, it is a pretty lengthy uh, easement there. Uh, one thing I do want to note, uh, previously I believe this was a 20-year easement. Uh, we renewed it 20 years ago. Uh, they have now gone to uh, a 50-year term on these easements. Uh, and another big difference is they have found a way to charge us 
for these easements. So the fair market value, uh, according to them, is $23,700 that we would have to pay for obtaining this easement. So this is standard practice for the Corps of Engineers now. Uh, so if we want to keep this easement, we'll have to pay that uh, $23,000 uh, in addition you know, to, to renewing this. So I know that we have some, some pipelines, water lines in that easement. Uh, so we, we really need to renew this easement for future use. Okay. That's 23000 for 50 years? Yes, sir. And I don't know if that's the, the value based on 50 years only or if that's forever. I mean, 50 years from now, I don't think any of us will be here, but we'll, <coughs> whoever's here will have to find that out at that point. It might be for 50 years, but... Probably within that 50 years, the Corps would probably come back with another another fee. They'll find another way to they'll, charge. They'll find another way to, uh, to charge it, I'm sure. They will. But um, <clears throat> any, any questions on any of the consent agenda? We're moving on to new business. Number seven, first reading ordinance 2017-23. This is an ordinance to amend the physical year 2017-2018 general fund budget for fire department vehicles. I, I take it this is for the uh, fire truck we're going to get in October. No, no sir. This is this is actually the uh, shift commander vehicle, the new shift commander vehicle. Oh, okay. Then you then you. Yes, sir, when we, Okay. When we come before <coughs> y'all uh, during budget time, we gave an estimate of what we thought that vehicle would cost. So obviously, obviously, since then the prices have gone up quite considerably. On the equipment for that truck and the truck itself. So, and we were basing that off of a vehicle. The only one that we currently at the time could base it off of as a whole was we used Ruth, what, one of Rutherford County's vehicles that we thought were was a heavier duty truck, but it turned out to be that that was a half ton truck. The truck that we need is much beefier than that to be able to haul our trailers. So that was where the increase in the cost come from. So that's what the suggestion is for. That and the radio equipment. Yes. Radio equipment was a big charge. Yeah, ra expect. the radio equipment alone for the truck's $14,000. So, uh, and that was one of the lines that we had not, we had not really looked at. Uh, we have another, another little issue coming up that the chief and I are gonna meet with Metro over there about to do another upgrade again. So keep, keep that in mind, but uh, the radio was fourteen thousand dollars of this increase that we had not planned for. Uh, the radios that we currently, a lot of the radios that we purchased back several years ago, on eight hundred megahertz, are the model twenty five hundred series and Motorola. Those radios are now obsolete. Uh, so as we go, police department and fire department, we're every new vehicle we get, we're going to have to put the newer version. Of radio equipment in it we can't use the old that we have because they've uh, made it obsolete <laughs> what was the original budget amount for that um, vehicle uh, I think it was 40, at 40 000. we had 40,000 in the budget yes ma'am and if you look at the following page there is a breakdown of the vehicle cost which shows it at uh, just under 64000 so that's why the budget amendment is for $25,000 to cover that cost. So kind of concerning because it's more than 150% increase over the original estimated um, price of that. Okay. But uh, it's, more, it's, it's more price, but it's a, it's a different different type truck yes sir it's it's to, a totally different truck that that price was based off of a half ton pickup truck and the radio and uh, price the radios we, <laughs> there was no way for us to know they were going to do the changes in the radios and these others were going to be obsolete yeah. so we were basing our prices from old radio prices which were like seven years old uh, and then we were basing the truck off of a half ton truck which should not have, have occurred it should have been you know based off of a higher uh, gross weight vehicle than what we had done it and that's where it came to in fact we even went back we went back and went with the same lighting package that the police department did on their current uh, SUVs with the exception of putting the one size larger light bar on it 
because the roof line is so much larger on a pickup truck than an SUV. But this is using the exact same lighting system that's on the patrol units and police in the police department as well. So, uh, you know, but this is that is turnkey there. That's everything. That's the slide out tray for the rear. That's the topper, uh, lighting, striping. I mean, and that's I, to replace the. the that, it's it's going to replace which one now? It's a, it's going to be replacing the dually that they're using. Dually, the old Dodge yes, dually. Sir. Yes, sir. And it's pretty well. It's done seen it done. its days. We've yes. had it for how long, Ricky? Uh, well, we've had it ever since. Uh, we've had it. Oh Lord, we had it since before we went city. Oh, so, yeah. and we bought it used then, and it had a well over. They've had over a hundred thousand miles on it when we bought it used. You know, it used to be the white truck. A lot of people think that's a new truck because we wrapped it, but that truck's got like 175,000 miles on it. Uh, it was it was used when we bought it, and it's it come over from private, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not not getting too far off schedule mm -hmm. on the uh, on the you said the radios. Uh, did we ever the, the, the radio system we bought a few years back? That we bought the same system that a little town right outside Memphis. Did we ever get anything done on that? The, uh, that was actually the uh, that was actually the uh, CAD RMS. Yeah, the R and CAD and RMS okay. stuff. I was thinking the fire department, police department was greatly going to get all tied into That was CAD RMS. Okay. But, I mean, we are, the radio system we bought into was for us to come into compliance okay. with federal standards. That was the reason that we went on the Metro because at that time we, we absolutely did not have any of any income coming, even close enough to do a standalone site. But that's one of the things. I Probably. think it was Germantown down toward Memphis. Correct. Us and Germantown was the only two cities in the uh, state of Tennessee that went on that package, wasn't it? With the records management system and CAD system, yes, and there's some others coming on now. But as far as the radios are concerned, um, we're going to have to take a look at that during the next budget planning cycle. Serious consideration about it because, once again, uh, we're at the mercy of Metro. Right. Like I said, I don't want to get too far and they've off. they've gone up. Yes, sir. Any more questions on the uh, fire vehicle? If, if you do, you can always call Ricky. To, to, and uh, hear no more questions. We'll move down to number eight. This is a resolution 2017-21, a resolution calling for a special census of the population of the city of Laverne. Um, who wants to speak on this? Mayor, I, I can speak to this one. Uh, we're getting ready to kick off a special census here in Laverne. Uh, we've got a, an internal uh, staff committee that, that's working on this. Uh, in order to officially start the process, we have to pass a resolution, <coughs> uh, which that's what is in front of you uh, for, for Tuesday night. Uh, and then after that, we'll have to send a letter to the state to formally tell them that we're starting the, the census process. So over the next few months, you're gonna hear a lot about the census and, and we'll be doing mail outs and a lot of PR and promotion and try to get the word out. And then at some point, I uh, don't have an exact timeline yet, uh, we'll, we'll have to start going door to door for the ones that don't mail in their, their cards or, or whatever, and, or if they don't uh, sign up online. So. Uh, if you don't want anybody coming by your house, uh, be sure to go ahead and send in your your forms and or, or sign up online, and and that'll make it easier on us and make it easier on them. So it's it's important that we do this. Uh, we think we've had some substantial growth uh, since 2010, uh, and of course we receive uh, state shared revenues based on each individual person uh, that is counted. Uh, so if we if we have say an additional 5,000 folks. That's over a half a million dollars in state shared revenues each year, so it, it could be uh, very beneficial. So, wanted to take this opportunity to go ahead and, and get this started, and uh, you know it'll help reduce the demand on the property taxes and get some much needed revenue for for things like what Chief just mentioned, uh, as far as radio systems and police and fire and everything else that we need. So, you know, it's it's important that we make sure everybody is counted. <coughs> Any any further questions on the census? 
Number nine, resolution 2017-22, a resolution of the city of Laverne, Board of Mayor and Alderman to declare property owned by the city to be surplus to the need, city needs and direct disposal of the same. Uh, this is uh, seized and uh, confiscated vehicles. Some of these vehicles has been in storage for quite quite a while. It's, it's uh, I think they got a list of it there. Any questions on the vehicles? Now number 10, resolution 2017-23, a resolution to donate surplus, surplus use water meters to consolidated utility district for parts. Um, this is uh, water meters that we've took out of the ground. They're, they're in pieces or broke and consolidated. Uh, My Michael, you want to explain it? <coughs> Basically, consolidated reached out to us uh, asking if, if we would consider giving them our old meters that we take out the ground. Badger discontinued the old style meter and just prior to them doing so, Consolidated purchased 50,000 of those meters. So they're no longer available to any other city uh, or, or anybody. So when we purchase our new meters for the swap out program, we have no use for the old ones to come out the ground. Uh, so the good neighbor that they've been, they've helped us in, in many ways. We feel like it would be a, a good way to return the favor to them by donating those to them. Uh, basically what they're in need of is the transmitters. That, are, that gives a signal to, for the meter readers to, to read the meters. Any questions since Michael's up there? Uh, this would, is something that we're probably going to scrap or throw away anyway. These are plastic meters. They are of no value to us. In the past, the brass meters we kept in a bin, took to the scrap yard. We get anywhere from twelve to $1,500 a run. These are plastic. They're, they're not worth We'd have to throw them in a duster and pay to have them hold off. Yes, sir. I like the recycling bin. <coughs> and Mayor, at this point, uh, this resolution is for the first 250 that we already have. Yes. Uh, we'll be coming back to you in the future with more resolutions to, to donate additional as we get them. Uh, we had talked about the possibility of, of approving something where we could give them to an on, on an own on <coughs> basis, but, but Evan, you know, it didn't feel that that would be a very good way to do it just to make sure we keep track of what we're giving them and, and whatnot. So. Uh, just safer just to designate exactly what we're giving them each time. Thank you, Michael. Yes, thank you. Y'all do a good job, Bo. I appreciate all the hard work a couple weeks ago on that big, big water lake. Yes, thank you. We're down to number 11. Approve or remove board members, committee members. Uh, Park and Rec Advisory Committee, we two removed, removing two, uh, and then we, we, we're going to possibly add two. Mayor uh, Parks and Rec is one member. Park and Rec, yeah. Remove one member. And um, I think the one we're removing is uh, Selene uh, Hanley. Uh, we'll uh, remove the, uh, move, uh, her and then we'll pick, pick one uh, Tuesday tonight. B, Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, one vacant and one and uh, remove two, so we'll do that also Tuesday, and uh, the ones the applicant will pick pick the replacements. And C is Greenway Advisory Committee. We got two vacancies. I think they resigned, so we won't have to remove them. We just have to replace them. Correct. So uh, we'll do that Tuesday night, and it's online. They can they can. They can come in and apply it if, if they if they if anybody wants on any of them three boards. Yes, I can take applications up until Tuesday. <coughs> Number twelve, a motion to approve or deny a settlement offered with the Ryder Truck Rental uh, lawsuit. Uh, uh, we will have a ex uh, executive session. Will be happen before the meeting Tuesday night. And uh, we'll be voting on lease. We'll uh, take the settlement or turn it down. So that'd be a Tuesday's motion on, on the uh, on the uh, settlement for the right of truck over on Walden Road. 
number 13, discussion, renewal of the gas franchise with Smyrna, town of Smyrna. This is a contract that we signed, I think, 10 years ago. Eight, eight years ago. Eight years ago, and I think it comes up 10, but we we got to... We got to do it for like 18 months. Uh, the uh, the language that was in the current franchise, they had to request renewal uh, at least two years prior to the expiration. So uh, we have received that letter to uh, to renew the franchise. Uh, if if the board uh, votes to to move ahead with with doing so, we'll have to draft another uh, franchise agreement with Smyrna, uh, which will take a little bit of time, but but we'll work that with Evan and and their attorneys and whatnot, and uh, we'll get that process started. So it'll be probably two or three months before that comes back again to, for this, to this board for approval. Uh, this is basically just the authorization to, to move ahead with the renewal. You basically only have two options. You either renew with Smyrna uh, to, to continue the franchise, or we would have to purchase the entire system that is in, in Laverne uh, and, and set up a whole new department to run it ourselves. Uh, obviously, at this point, we have no clue what that would cost or entail, but obviously it would be very expensive uh, to, to start that process up. So it's up to the board. We could always look into uh, finding out what it would cost and, and go through that process, um, but that's obviously going to take a substantial amount of time to, uh, to look into. But we got we got some little time to. Well, we options. essentially have two years to, to get it done. I, I think that's why we had the two year notification in there was because if we wanted to go ahead and proceed with taking it over ourselves and start our own gas department, uh, that would give us the time hopefully to to make the changes we need to to operate it ourselves. Okay. Do we do we. Uh, Do we need to have a maybe a, a, a separate workshop on this maybe later on? You could if you if you want to discuss it further. We could always set up a workshop. Too. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. In, you know, we in, in, to have Sperner come down here so we can ask ask them questions. <clears throat> uh, I was on board when they we signed that agreement eight years ago, uh, but I, I don't think anybody else was here so. Uh, you know, kind of get everybody up to speed. We might call a uh, a meeting that we can meet with Smyrna and they can explain more and kind of get the new members up to date of what's going on. So uh, to do it, but I think at first in the seventies, Laverne signed a thirty-year contract, and then when it ran out, I think we signed a ten-year contract. Correct, with the option for another ten. Ten, yeah. And that's what this is for. Oh, well. well, we can get that set up, and then that's where the other council member and myself, I might have a few new questions to ask them too. Then in the meantime, we, we might figure out what it costs to, to take it over, you know, and have all the information to, to, to look over. And that's going to take probably six months or longer just to determine what it would cost for us to. Like I say, we got time. It's ain't something we, we'll have to do right now, but I'd rather explore, explore all options and. If we sign another contract, it's going to be for another 10 years. Mm -hmm. I think it serve the citizens. I think we need to know, know, know everything before we make the decision. Okay. I'll take this off the agenda, and then I'll, I'll work with Smyrna to try and set up a workshop where we can discuss it with them. Okay. Let's, uh, <clears throat> we're down to 14. This is another discussion, F <clears throat> FYI. Uh, metro sewer rate increase. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that we are having a rate increase from Metro for our sewer service. Uh, currently, uh, we are paying, uh, I believe it's a dollar thirty-two uh, per one hundred or per CCF, uh, and it's going to a dollar thirty-four. So it's a one point three percent increase. Uh, the price for the flows that exceed the maximum rate is going from a dollar sixty-five to a dollar sixty-seven uh, per hundred cubic feet. So it, it's not a big increase, but it is an increase. <coughs> I just want to make sure everyone is aware this goes into effect October first. But it, but I think it was a whole lot lower than 
I think most people uh, probably estimate it to be. So then you know we that's a good that's a good sign there. Yeah, when when we were renegotiated the uh, contracts three or four years ago, uh, they they have given us the choice between two different uh, indexes and. Uh, Thankfully, one is 1.3%, which is the one they went with, because it's the lower of the two. The other one was 2.6%, so, uh, and that was the one we used to be under uh, before we added that second index. So because of that renegotiation a few years ago, it is a lower increase than what it normally would have been. Number 15 is discussion, FYI, update on the request for proposal for the operation maintenance and management of the water treatment plant. I think that's, I think that's contracted up. That contract, uh, the current contract with Severn Trent uh, expires at the end of January. Uh, we've been working with uh, Griggs and Maloney to uh, help us with this request for proposals. Uh, it's been over 10 years since we originally put this out for proposals, and so we felt it was time to uh, make sure we're we're getting the best service possible for this for the residents. Uh, we did open uh, proposals, uh, I believe, on September 14th, and um, we received two proposals. One was from Severn Trent, and the other was from Clearwater Solutions. Uh, at this point, we're not ready to make a recommendation. We're still reviewing the proposals, and and we have actually sent some follow-up questions to them to to kind of clarify a few things. Uh, so we, we hope to bring you a, a recommendation uh, at next month's workshop and meeting uh, as far as which, which <coughs> the uh, staff and, and Griggs and Maloney feel that we should proceed with. So uh, right now we're, we're still doing our research and, and our behind the scenes work to, to see what's, what's best for the city and, and then uh, we'll bring that back to you next month. I guess that puts us down to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Cole. Just want to remind everyone, um, I've gotten a message from Rob Mitchell saying that um, the tax appraisals are going out and for uh, anyone that wants to, they can apply for the tax freeze uh, before next year when the reappraisals happen. That's it for me. Alderman Brown. Thank you. Alderman Jones. Uh, I want to welcome, this might be kind of premature, but I think they're going to, we've got two new police officers going to be sworn in tomorrow. Uh, Officer Rick DeWire and uh, Officer Joe Tidmans. Nick Dwyer. Oh, Nick. Who did I say? Rick. 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 It's Nick, yeah, Nick. Nick Dwyer and Joe Tinsman? Timson. Timson, yeah. They're going to be sworn in at, what, 3 o'clock? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock tomorrow. Yes. And, we'll and do, here, at, here at the boardroom. Yes. And we are also going to do the formal swearing in for Officer Tim <coughs> Peel, who graduated uh, uh, in the last class, but uh, he came back and went right straight to work and we didn't get a chance to do his formal then so we're going to throw him in there with them so he's got his formal and gets pictures <laughs> but it'd be tomorrow at three o'clock in this room yes okay so anybody wants a 10 is welcome more than welcome Good deal. and keep all the people at Burnett Chapel Church in our prayers especially the the Crow Smith family uh, uh, it was, it was, we heard, heard it all on the news and it's, and it was, it was something that, that surprised everybody. But, uh, this weekend is going to be a beautiful, get out and enjoy it. It's an excellent time to be outdoors activities. It's perfect time to come out and enjoy the parks and the greenways. It's, it's already done. So just enjoy the pretty weather and, uh, I have nothing else. I call this workshop over.